always sick. So they died almost two years apart, and they were like two years apart in age. So my cousin, my cousin tells me that when we hit 93, <laughs> but my dad, my dad and Aunt Irene were just so. They had such a great relationship. When my dad, um, Aunt Irene was, of course, the older sister, and she, uh, you know, she kind of kept my dad in line. When my, when my mother died and my dad fell apart, um, and he had all these complaints, and all of a sudden, you know, life was just not what it was supposed to be anymore. And he would call Aunt Irene all the time, and they would have long conversations. She was in Huntsville, Alabama. And my dad would say, yeah, but... You know, I can't, I have all these problems, you know, this, I can't do this, I can't walk very far, I have to go to the, whatever, whatever they, I shouldn't say this except that it fits in with the mannequin fits. <laughs> 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 they have these long, long, deep conversations and then all of a sudden it would come to a oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just cut. <laughs> Of life. And uh, <laughs> other, other things. I've got a nail file, a 
which I've been needing for my purse. <laughs> so uh, two years later, I'm still finding little bits of nanny. So um, do you still have your dance? But did you sell your dance car? Oh no, we you still have it. It's on the parking lot. <laughs> Mom, Mom, what about the first time you drove Uncle Milt's car? Oh, yes. I need that story. You were six or five? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if any of you all date back this far to the green Studebaker, but he had a green Studebaker that he was so proud of. And, you know, the, the Skokie, and y'all may think Illinois is the Great Plains and it's flat, but the Skokie house actually is on a little tiny rise. And I was out in the in the... Just such a terrible child. I was out in the Studebaker, had somehow bribed Betty Ann and Trudy to get in the car with me. What's going to happen if I, change, if I pull this stick down? Well, it went sliding down the driveway, um, over across Lee Street, and up into the yard, and Uncle Milk's running out. <laughs> and somehow he got in there. Whatever, however you got the emergency brake on in those days, just as it was about to slam into the neighbor's, you know, plate glass window. <laughs> Which, but even throughout all of that, I felt I never felt that I was going to be turned into a sausage. <laughs> no, I just felt his love. He was just such a supportive, wonderful kind of guy and a perfect uncle. You know, your your own parents, you just just kind of picky sometimes. <laughs> but no, I mean, he was just, just a gem my whole life. I just, I just adored him. And my last story is last summer when I came to visit, um, we stopped at the Dempster Market. And I, 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 Sandy was telling me earlier, it said Keystone and Dempster or yeah. something. Anyway, so Betty and I were picking up a few things. Uncle Mel was in the car. And I had been in there, and she said, oh, they've got wonderful bread. So I go over, and there's breads from everywhere. And I'm picking up loads of bread, and I thought, this is going to just feel really. And I found another brand, and I decided to, um, to go with the first one. So I took it out to the car, and I said, look at this, Uncle Mel. Would you like some? And he, I said, it's on made in a bakery here. turned out to be the bakery that my mother and Uncle Mel walk to in their neighborhood when they were children. Oh, and it's uh, still there. And I had never, I mean, I'd never, their house was in that part of Avondale that is under the Kennedy Expressway. Split <laughs> Jefferson Park. So, um, anyway, it was, we saw, we drove around the old neighborhood with Alan and Trudy and Alan's son Andy and Uncle Mel in August. And I just I'm so thrilled that I got to see it and really, you know, be a part of there. See the first uh, Jefferson Park Lutheran Church, and, which I think is in Ethiopian Mission now. But uh, but their school, I mean, it's a beautiful neighborhood, and just and the and the bakery was still there and had jillions of varieties of things, and we went in and bought stuff. So yeah, you bought, I was you really, I mean, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was just such a happy so. <laughs> but I do want to thank Alan and Trudy and Betty Ann for sharing their, their dad and their mom with me all these years. I just feel like he's, it's a great loss. I mean, we're so thankful he had a wonderful life. And, so, you know, we, it is a celebration because we all loved him so, but it's, it's a huge loss to not have him to be coming to Chicago and not, not seeing him. And I do hope everybody knows about, you know, Alan put all of his World War II letters online. So they're, it's wonderful to be able to read those. I have the original. So. And I, I recently found out that Nancy has something else, <laughs> which I didn't know. When we were talking about the mannequin fist and Alan brought all the candies back from Europe and we got the letter from Bruce